What's up guys, so today I'm going to be showing you guys quickly how to kind of speed up your internet for gaming and just for all around cleaning up your internet purposes, you know, when I'm just talking about gaming, mostly gaming, because I know a lot of people were complaining about that on my other video saying that they had problems with that, but I'm also going to get around to web browsing experience and stuff like that and make that faster as well. Um, I'm not an expert on this whole type of thing, but I know a couple of little things that can kind of help you run, you know, run your internet as efficiently as it will run, um, increase your bandwidth and such so that you can use on... Uh, your computer and one of the best ways that you do that really this isn't something that I show on your computer but it's something that you should do anyway is that if you have other devices using up your internet a lot of people don't think of this but if you have a lot of devices using your internet that's probably one of the main reasons that's going to be slow like if you have one like let's say you have your PlayStation on or your Wii or your Chromecast or whatever and you're watching Netflix while you play a game and let's say you're uploading a YouTube video you're you know watching Netflix and then you're watching a movie on another computer and it's all going on at the same time that's probably part of why it's being so slow so that's something that you should really just before you watch this video keep that in mind because that's one of the big things that people miss is that when you have a lot of devices streaming to the internet one time it will make your internet more slow because it has to divide all of the bandwidth in among each individual device anyway moving on so this is what you can do on your individual computer to help it run your computer you know your internet run as efficiently as you can run so one of the main reasons that people have a problem with this and they say oh you know my computer was fine a couple weeks ago and now it has this big problem well if it isn't because of other devices that you bought and now that they're being used, if that's not the reason that your internet's slow, and it wasn't slow a couple weeks ago, there's a good chance that you have something wrong with your computer. You know, mostly a virus or some kind of like, uh, you know, some bloatware or whatever you want to call it, uh, spyware type of thing. Um, so the first thing you want to do is open up your antivirus. So I'm recommending Malwarebytes. Um, you can use a lot of these. You know, I've heard of Avast, AVG, Malwarebytes. Uh, IOBIT Malwarefighters are a good one too. I'll leave a link to this one and this one in the description. I highly recommend you want to scan. Um, so for Malwarebytes, the newest one, it's a little different than it used to be, but it's really easy. You just, If you want to do it quickly, this is a hyper scan. It's basically just the equivalent of a quick scan. Custom scan, you can scan certain folders, and then this is a threat scan, which scans pretty much your entire computer. It's like a full scan. So basically, you just want to hit scan now, and it'll tell you, and then when this is finished, you just want to hit a... Uh, I'll just skip update. And you just want to hit um, quarantine all or... Uh, do what's recommended. I usually just quarantine all of them and then if I find that there's a problem, you know, it's not like you're deleting it It's just kind of like making it so that they don't run, but um, it's not getting rid of it So you can always undo it at any time. So that's basically that um, I'll have to let that this whole thing later, but that's basically what you're gonna do. So that's Malwarebytes I'm not gonna go through the whole thing because the scan can take a while. So I'm just kind of kind of ignore that for now um, And quit Skype as well, I guess So next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna want to run a disk scan. So there are a few ways you can do this um one of the best ways, you can of course hit CCleaner, which does a good job of uh, cleaning your computer. You can do a disk cleanup, basically just clear um, some of the junk that's in your system that's basically making your computer slower as a whole. So let's open up CCleaner. I use this on one of my other videos. I'm not going to go through it too much because, I mean, I kind of already did this in one of my other videos. Um, so you're just going to hit Analyze, and then when that's finished, you're going to hit Run Cleaner. But I'm really not going to get into it because that's not what I really want to do today. Um, what I want to get to right now is how you can make your internet experience faster on your browsers. So I'm just gonna use Chrome for example. Uh, you can do this with other browsers as well. You know, you could do this for Firefox, you could do this for Internet Explorer, Safari, Opera, stuff like that. So we're just gonna hit uh, open here. And when your internet's open, you're gonna go here to uh, these three little bars here. Basically, you're just gonna go into your um, into your options or your settings. Um, one thing you, want, you could do is you can go into your history, you can clear that. Um, this is kind of just stuff that uh, I've been on. So you're just going to want to clear all your browsing data. Um, clear safe passwords. I recommend not doing that. Basically, you just want to clear your history, delete the cookies and stuff like that. Empty your cache is the main one that you want to do. So you're going to hit clear browsing data. Now, this can take a little while. Um, I like to keep my passwords because it doesn't really use up all that much uh, in memory anyway. Basically, when you clear your history, it kind of just makes your computer run faster because it doesn't have to worry about preloading stuff that you've uh, sites that you visited before which is also a reason that you want to empty your cache. So that's basically that. Um, the next thing you want to do is go to your settings, I believe it is. Basically, what I want to do here is I want to delete toolbars and extensions. I don't really have a lot on my computer right now, but I know a lot of people do. Basically, what you want to do is you just want to disable whatever you're not using. So right now, I'm using Adblock. I only I don't usually use it for YouTube, but I'll occasionally use it on a site. If I'm on like Amazon or something, I just want to not look at ads. Um, most of these things I have enabled, but let's say I don't want to use Google Docs, I would just uncheck it, and then that'd be done. But I want to keep this enabled, so... Um, so that's basically that. So the next thing you want to do is, if you after you've cleared your extensions, deleted the toolbars that you don't need, basically just doing everything you can to help you run your internet more quickly. So let's say you're talking about gaming and you don't really want to get into that, and you just want to make gaming as fast as possible. One of the big things that I can't really show you on a computer right now either 
is you want to lower your settings. Now, I'm not going to show it on any individual thing. Like, I could open up League of Legends and show you right now, but there's really no point. It's very self-explanatory. The lower your settings are, the better your internet's probably, probably going to run. I remember um, about last year when I didn't have a very good computer and I didn't have very capable hardware. I was trying to run League of Legends, even just League of Legends, which is a very bare bones game. You run that on high settings, your computer can't handle it, then your ping starts to go up, so you want to have it lower. It's not always the cause, you can have really low settings and still have a high ping, and you can have really high settings and have no different ping, but sometimes, if your computer isn't very capable, that's one of the reasons that you'll see high ping. Uh, so I thought I'd throw that in there, because a lot of people end up missing that. Um, so after, next thing you're going to do is you're going to go into MS Configs, so you're just going to go into the little star thing, you're going to type in run right here and you're just gonna click run here and then you're gonna type in whoops ms config now this brings you to a kind of startup and boot services uh stuff you know different things so basically this is kind of just general stuff but when you go to the services these are certain things that some of these things you really don't need um i recommend keeping most of the stuff from microsoft because that's probably stuff that you know is preloaded with like windows and such most of it so you're going to want to keep that open but let's say services, if I don't want Steam to really run right now, like I already have it stopped here. Let's say I don't want Steam running all the time because I'm not always going to be playing a Steam game. You would uncheck that. Um, so that's basically that. And when you go to startup, it's the same thing really. Uh, let's say I don't want Origin to run on startup. I would just hit this and I would hit apply. But basically just enable all the things that uh, that you don't really, that don't really need to be running. Like services, I forgot this, hide all Microsoft services. These are kind of just things that are here because of uh, stuff that you've downloaded. So that's usually stuff that you can get rid of. Some of the stuff you really shouldn't, like uh, I'm not gonna get rid of my external events utility and stuff like this because these are all like drivers and stuff that I uh, generally would use. Like I don't wanna get rid of my Catalyst Control Center because that's kind of my control panel and that's where I can uh, control like my graphics utilities and such. So I'm not gonna change any of that, but um, let's go start up here. Like I already got rid of Origin, which it's just kind of like a, uh, it's like a, it's like Steam, but it's only for certain games. So that's kind of what it is. Um, let's say I don't want Event System Kit or run on the start of either. I'd just get rid of that. Um, I have it Malware Fighter. Don't really need that right now. I mean, I would run that to run a scan if I wanted to, but I don't need it running all the time. So then you just hit Apply, and then you hit OK. And sometimes you'll have to restart for them to take effect, but that's not always the case. Usually you would want to restart anyway just to make sure everything's implemented. Um, so right now I'm just going to move on to a couple more things. Basically, the next thing you want to go to is TCP Optimizer. I'll leave a link to this in the description, but when you open it, you're going to want to right-click it, and you're going to want to run it as administrator. Because if you don't run it as administrator, some of the uh, the options won't be available to you, and you won't be able to do everything that you would normally want to do. So you'll do that. You'll be prompted when you know you'll be asked if you want to open it as a as a user. You just say yes. Um, standard stuff and you basically want to take your connection speed here and you want to bring it to whatever your connection speed is now the way you check your connection speed is there are a couple ways you can do this let's say you just downloaded a file and you get a certain amount of megabytes per second multiply that by eight and that's your megabits now the difference between megabytes and megabits is megabits um there are eight megabits to a megabyte so i have 17 megabits per second you can tell that the megabits is megabits not megabytes because the b is lowercase so um but let's say you're not downloading something you want to know what your speed is without downloading something you type in uh speed whoops speed test and it's really right here it's called speed test on uh, uh, it's a really good site and it basically just tells you some stuff about your computer now i already know my speed but let's say you don't know yours you're just gonna it's you're gonna go to the closest region to you it'll do that automatically basically you're just gonna hit begin test and it'll tell you all about like your download speed upload speed and your ping so my ping is probably gonna be okay um maybe around 20 milliseconds okay so it's about 25 so i'm not gonna go into this but I usually get an average of about 17 megabits per second. So, you're gonna want to uh, you want to go to custom here. Now, the reason it was at current was because the custom was what it was currently already at because I had already customly changed it. But let's say you don't want to like you could either hit custom or optimal. The difference between custom and optimal. This is kind of these are my custom settings. It's almost the same as optimal. There are a couple differences here and there. If you want to take a look, uh, you could pause the video and take a look at uh, the stuff that I have set. Um, most people's stuff is different. I have this at 8. Um, I'm not really going to need to run 8 different windows at one time for Internet Explorer, and most of the stuff is usually fine here. Um, 4, 5, 6, 7, that's standard as well. Um, this here is optimized for 3. 3 is better for gaming. This is better for all-around stuff, and this is just for basic web browsing. Let's say you do a mix of gaming, web browsing, you want to hit 2. Optimize, you're going to hit 3. Now, you can do 2 or 3. It doesn't really matter. Um, I usually tend to hit 3, but you can do either one. So that's basically that. Um, but let's say you don't want to get into everything here and you just want to hit something that will be good for your computer and will definitely, you'll see an, an increase most of the time, you just hit optimal. I already have my own custom, so I'm just going to keep it as it currently is. 
and that's that. I'm not going to go through the whole thing because, I, frankly, I'm not going to lie. I don't know everything about uh, this program. I don't know how everything works, but I know how to get some settings that will tweak your performance, which is what you're really looking for here. So next we're going to look at is SpyBot, Search and Destroy. Now this gets rid of, like I said, there's a spyware on your computer usually that you don't know about. I mean, some people don't always have it, especially if you have a new computer. You're probably not going to have too much of it. You might, depending on the uh, the preloaded stuff that's put on your computer from a manufacturer. But there's some stuff that you probably won't need. So you're just going to hit OK here. And you're going to hit Check for Problems. Now I ran a scan last night, and I already quarantined most of the problems that I had or deleted the programs from which they stemmed. So, you're, so I'm not going to find anything, but, but basically what you're going to do is you're going to hit a scan, and a scan's already in progress. You'll know when the scan's done because all the green's done, and you'll find some problems. From there, you're just going to kind of, uh, you'll be prompted. I forget exactly what it is because um, I just did this yesterday, so I know there's not, um, I'm not going to find any problems. But I think it says right here, you're just going to hit Fix Selected Problems button. So that's basically that. Um, it's good because it gets it stops everybody from monitoring, monitoring your computer that you don't want them to monitor, and it'll give you some more speed and, you know, who likes to really be spot on anyway? I mean, it's kind of creepy. So that's basically that. And if you ever find a problem, I think there's a recovery where it'll basically um, bring you back to the settings you had before, which is actually the same thing as P uh, TCP Optimizer. It saves your uh, old settings in case if something goes wrong, you can't connect to your internet. It'll preload the old settings. It basically just sets a certain point for you to reload it if something goes wrong, which is good because then it basically ensures that there's not going to be a problem. So um, so that's that. Actually, I just want to show you real quick just to show you that... Uh, that, it, that that's kind of how it works. There's one little thing I forgot to mention. Um, let's say I wanted to change here. Let's say I go to optimal, I hit apply. You're gonna check the backup and then you're gonna hit okay. But I'm not gonna do that because I already like my settings. So I'm just gonna put them on current. I'm gonna exit. So um, that's basically it for speeding up. You know your internet as far as web browsing goes and gaming and so stuff like that. There are some other methods you could use, but most of them don't involve actually using your computer. I'm sure there are a couple other programs that might exist, but I feel like this kind of gets the job done pretty well. So um, if you guys have any questions, be sure to PM me, leave a comment, stuff like that. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video.